Today I'm thinking about uh, illumination and I want to discuss with you about adding illumination to a machine vision system. We have the camera system, um, we have some kind of computer for image processing and we have illumination. It could be different. I mean, think about if it's a machine vision system that is assembled on a vehicle or maybe a robot for outdoor use or it could be a flying drone for outdoor use. We have very little chance of actually affecting the situation for illumination. But on the other hand, if we are dealing with uh, inspection of produced item in a factory, in indoor environment, we should have a pretty good uh, chance of controlling this uh, environment in terms of illumination. What kind of uh, light is used, uh, wavelength and intensities and so on, direct, directional of light. If it's diffused, if it's like directed light, in which direction we are using the light. So, uh, one could summarize the, this into the goal of illumination. What do we actually want to achieve by adding uh, a source for illumination to the machine vision system? And what are the different kinds of uh, sources of light that we have available that we can use for this? And we can also discuss uh, what kind of feature we can enhance the visibility of if we are intelligent in, in using uh, uh, the light and its different properties. What we see here is a principal sketch of a machine vision system used for inspection of items at production. Here is a conveyor belt and there are metal plates coming on this conveyor belt with drilled holes and let's say that the idea here is that the machine vision system is supposed to inspect the diameters of these drilled holes uh, we have the camera that is observing this observation area over the conveyor belt and we are using uh, illumination light sources that are re radiating light over the observation area and exposures of images and exposures of light is uh, initiated whenever this photocell is detecting that a uh, produced item is present on this conveyor belt. So in this case, let's say that the camera exposure and the light exposure is also synchronized. And the synchronization is initiated in this case by using a photocell that detects the presence of a produced item on this conveyor belt. And on the computer here, we are running algorithms for inspection of these images. And the idea is, in that case, to measure the individual diameters of these holes. And if they are within an acceptable acceptance range, um, then we, we allow these items to pass on the conveyor belt. But if they are not within an acceptable range, then this actuator here is actually pushing these items off the conveyor belt. So this is kind of a, a simple principle for how an automated inspection of items in production could be, could be designed. And uh, uh, the goal of the illumination in this case and in general is to enhance the visibility of the important features. And I mean, in this case, the important features here that we are interested in is if we can use the, the light to enhance the visibility of these holes, such that we are able to measure its diameter. And naturally, we also want to suppress the features in the picture that we are not interested in. <clears throat> and we can use the direction, the color, uh, structure, polarity, and synchronization of light to enhance and suppress uh, features of interest and no interest. Light is electromagnetic radiation and we can view it as a propagation of, of an electromagnetic wave having a certain wavelength or we can view it as a, a stream of particles, photons, where the photons have different energy uh, and uh, the wave propagation have different wavelengths. We can divide the light into uh, 
the wavelengths that are visible for humans, the visible light, and we have shorter wavelengths having photons with higher energy, uh, the ultraviolet light. This is the kind of light that comes from the sun uh, that is a bit dangerous for your skin if you are if you are out in the sun too much, especially the uh, class that is subclass called uh, UVC with the shorter wavelengths. It's kind of dangerous for your skin and you can get skin cancer if you are uh, exposed too much to this kind of sunlight. Uh, Visible light can be further uh, divided into its colors like blue, green, uh, yellow, uh, orange, red, and so on. And the longer wavelengths that are not visible for humans is called the infrared light, which can also be further divided into subclasses like the wavelengths that are very close to the visible uh, wavelength, the near infrared. We have the short wavelength infrared and middle wavelength in infrared and long wavelength infrared. This long wavelength infrared light in the range of 8 to 15 micrometers, this band is uh, used for, for thermal cameras that are able to uh, detect the heat from, from uh, human bodies or from, from animals, or you can use thermal cameras for analyzing uh, the heat dissipation from uh, surfaces, uh, heat losses from houses, buildings, and so on. But then you should be aware of that light is in it in the nature is very seldom monochromatic. Monochromatic means that it will be composed out of only one wavelength. No, there is a there is a wide spectrum of of different uh, wavelengths for the light and we light sources can have different uh, composition uh, of, of its spectra and we can compare a light source composition of the spectra with the corresponding uh, emission spectra of a black body and the, the emission uh, intensities uh, dependency of uh, Wavelength and temperature uh, is defined by this equation. And you know that uh, if you go into the kitchen and maybe you have forgotten and left uh, your electrical heater on, uh, or maybe you also can see um, iron left in the fire that has been heated a lot. If you look at this iron then or look at the heater, then it becomes red. And it's because of the increase of temperature uh, that it will contain wavelengths that are within the visible area. So you can actually see it by your own eyes. Uh, but of course, it is not only red. It will also have a, a large spectrum of different wavelengths. And if we match this wavelength uh, with the temperature, then we can assign and approximate uh, the spectral composition of a light source with its corresponding temperature and we call it the color temperature of that light source. Yeah, and this kind of discussion naturally leads us into a review of different kinds of light sources that are available. And I would like to start with the with, uh, kind of normal light bulb. Inside this one you see like a thin wire, this thin uh, electrical heating. Uh, of a filament. Um, this wire has a, has a resistance and you are forcing current to flow through this resistance which will heat it up. And depending on how much you heat it up then the, the spectral composition of the light will be a bit different and the intensity of light will be a little bit different. In the range between 3000 to 3400 Kelvin. And I'm, I'm sure you maybe sometime have tried to experiment with these lamps and if you reduce the current then the light will look a bit more yellow red kind of and if you increase the light the intensity will increase and the light will become a bit more like whiter with natural then higher temperatures. The xenon lamps, uh, this is uh, ionized uh, xenon gas. Uh, 
it emits a white light, uh, has a definition of the color temperature to 5500 to 12000 Kelvin. It can be run continuously, as in your car, for instance, where you in modern cars you have xenon light, or it could be also flashlight. The drawback here is that they are expensive, and the reason why they are expensive is due to this quite sophisticated high voltage power supply that is necessary to drive them. Uh, fluorescent lamps uh, also use uh, gases inside, uh, argon, neon, that is uh, emitting uh, UV light as the electrons is passing through this gas. And the UV light is then transferred by a coating of phosphor by fluorescence uh, into a light that has a temperature range of 3000 to 6000 Kelvin. They have a rather short lifetime and that these kind of fluorescent lamps uh, like light tubes, you cannot uh, use them for flashlight. But the, the benefit then though is that they are very inexpensive. Uh, the preferred light for machine vision system, I would say, is the light emitting diodes. Those are the primary choice of illumination. They are inexpensive. They have a very long lifetime and you can easily uh, make them, drive them a, a flashlight. Um, they also come in different colors. The latest color that was developed was the blue uh, LED. And by combining uh, the yellow, uh, blue, green, red uh, diodes, you can compose uh, light that has different spectral composition and even white uh, LED uh, emitting diodes, light emitting diodes. Uh, these diodes, they have a temperature dependency, so you have to be very careful, especially for high power LEDs when you do the thermal design. They need to be properly cooled. This picture here shows an example of how you can use uh, the spectral composition of light in order to enhance the visibility of certain objects depending on which kind of color these objects have. Here is a color picture uh, using a color camera of a drawing, a children's drawing, and on top of this drawing is a blue pen. On this picture uh, below on the left side, this is a monochrome corresponding image and for these two images uh, we have been using white wide spectra light but for this image and for this image on the uh, right side we have been using green light or we have been using blue light and the idea here, here is that if you're using blue light then you are enhancing the visibility of uh, the blue uh, objects and if you're using green light then you're enhancing the visibility the intensity then of uh, the green objects so you see here when you you increase the and uh, make the, the the light in terms of wide spectral white light into green light then the intensity increases here on on the green background uh, on the other hand if you look at the blue using the blue light here what is enhanced is this blue pen that will have a higher intensity when we are using blue light. This is yet another example of the same. We see a color picture here to the left side of a printed circuit board. And you have a different kinds of components assembled on this circuit board. And we can focus in particular on this colorful connectors that we have here on the edge of the board. Green one, blue one and red one. Uh, on the downside to the left there is a corresponding monochrome image. And for these exposures we have been using uh, wide band with uh, light, uh, like, like w w white light. And uh, for these images on the right side we have been using monochrome uh, green light and blue light and you can see that when we are using the green light compared to this monochrome image uh, the intensity of this green component will be increased 
and the same if you're using blue light the intensity of this uh, blue component the blue connector will be increased compared to uh, this monochrome image where you have been using wide bandwidth uh, white light on the next picture uh, we see uh, a printed circuit board and in more detail the wires that are and the the copper tracks under beneath uh, a, a matte green solder resist and to the left this image has been uh, made exposed with the near infrared light 880 nanometer which is unvisible for humans and on the right side we have uh, white uh, wide band uh, visible light uh, the thing is here uh, that when we are using this near infrared light this light has the capability of penetrating this matte green solar resist so it is easier to actually see the edges and these uh, copper tracks becomes more visible when using near infrared light compared to using visible light so this is another example of how we can use the spectral composition of light in order to enhance the visibility of what we are actually are, are interested in polarized light is an electromagnetic wave and it is when it is propagating uh, it has a deterministic orientation and the thing is that uh, if light that is not polarized uh, if it is reflected as a specular reflection onto a metal surface or onto a dielectricum then it is partly polarized and also if you have a, a light that is polarized or partly polarized when it is reflected specularly onto a metal surface or onto a dielectricum then this orientation is somewhat shifted a few degrees and this kind of uh, property can be used as in this case you see in the picture where we have taken a, or made an image of uh, an electronic component that has a printing on this the uh, electrical surface and onto this dielectrical surface you get a certain amount of specular reflections and on the printing uh, you get diffused uh, reflections of either you can use uh, polarized light or you can use unpolarized light but the most efficient suppression is if you have one polarizer and you have one analyzer on the, on the camera side so you first polarize the, the light that is allowed to be reflected onto this surface and then you tune the polarization filter onto the camera so that it matches uh, and only those uh, that kind of light that has not changed the polarization then you can enhance the visibility of the printing from this electronic component and the specular reflections that is taken care on this surface the electrical surface has a shifted uh, orientation of shifted uh, polarization uh, that one is suppressed then by the analyzing filter yeah it can be compared with uh, sunlight in summer uh, this the sunlight is reflected onto the surface of water at sea and you get a lot of reflections in the water but if you have sunglasses uh, with that includes a polarization filter then you can reduce the specular reflections that are taken care that is happening on the surface of the water if you look at the picture here on the left side uh, normal uh, wide bandwidth white light without polarizing or, or analyzing filter uh, has been used and on the right side what you see here is the use of a uh, polarizer on the light source and there is an analyzer on on the camera and the, the visible improvement here is that a lot of the specular reflections that you see here on this the electrical surface has been reduced and there is much more clear uh, contrast between the printing and the background on this uh, side on this kind of picture uh, 
uh, in next uh, couple of um, slides, I'm going to present to you and show you principle how to use the directional properties of light. Um, diffuse light means light in all directions. Directed light means that we have light in a narrow beam. Telecentric light, this is a beam of only parallel light rays. Front light, this means that the illumination is on the same side as we have the camera. Backlight means that the illumination is on the opposite side, behind the object. Bright field, most of the light is actually reflected into the camera. And then dark field, most of the light is reflected away from, from the camera. <clears throat> this picture shows the principle behind diffused bright field front light. Diffused light means that the the light sources could be light emitting diodes in this case. It's a ring of these diodes that is surrounding the, the lens of the camera. So this is the lens and you have the camera here and this is on the object side. And diffuse means that the light is then emitted in, in all directions, as you can see here. Front light uh, means that the illumination, the light sources are on the same side as the camera. And then you have the object here in front. Uh, bright field means that most of the emitted light is reflected back into the camera. And this could create a very soft illumination without too much of, of uh, creating sharp shadows in, in the uh, uh, imaged objects. What you see here is a sample of, of pills, uh, medicine, that are packaged. And you can see here that you have quite soft uh, illumination without too much of sharp contrast and shadows. That could be used for inspection of uh, these packaged pills to make sure that all of these spaces are filled with, with pills, for instance. Could, could be such. Uh, on the next picture, uh, we have the same kind of illumination, just a different kind of uh, physical arrangement. Here is more like a dome of light sources that all together is spreading the radiated light in all different kinds of directions onto the observation area and object. But it's still diffused light, it's bright field, and it's front light in this case. This is a directed light. It is bright field and it is front light. It is bright field because most of the light here is still reflected back into the camera. It is front light because these illumination sources are still on the same side as the camera. And it is directed light because now the light is not uh, uh, radiated in all different kinds of directions there are one or or a few selected directions that are used here in this case it seems like we are using two different directions one directed illuminating source on both sides of this camera and this is the object side <clears throat> This is another example of directed light, but now we have dark field and it's front light. Dark field is, means that now we have a direction of the light such that due to these specular reflections on the uh, observed area and the observed uh, object side, uh, most of the light is reflected away from the camera. But then if there is something here that is disturbing this flat surface causing these specular reflections, this uh, small uh, difference uh, will cause light to be reflected into the camera. And you can enhance the visibility of this bulb sticking up here. Uh, it is front light because the light source is still on the same side as the camera and it is directed light, but now it is dark field. Dark field because most of the radiated light is reflected away from the camera lens. This one, yeah, you're right. It's a 
package of painkillers. And on this package of painkillers, you have a printing in blue and white that we can read, but there is also a, a printing here for, for blind people that you can feel with your fingertips. And this printing with the fingertips, of course, this is not made for, for us to, to read with our eyes. So how to inspect this using a machine vision system and the camera system to inspect that you have the proper printing here for blind people? Good question, huh? Yeah, there is. Uh, these are sticking up from uh, otherwise normally a, a flat surface. And we can use the directivity of light in order to enhance the visibility of these uh, small bulbs sticking up out of, of, of the surface. Uh, if you look at this picture, you see here uh, on the left side a device for illumination, a ring of, uh, of uh, light emitting diodes that are directing the lights towards the centers. All of them are directing the lights towards the center. And if you approach the surface quite close to the surface, as we have done in this left side down picture, uh, then you will create a dark field illumination such that most of the light is actually reflected away from the camera. But if there are something here, small uh, bulbs on the surface, uh, then light will be reflected into the camera and will be reflected into the camera from all sides since you have these light emit diodes that are sending light from all, all directions into the center. Uh, this is an example of trying to image these bulbs using just the diffuse bright field front light. Uh, but this is what happens when you are, are using this uh, dark field uh, illumination. Then where we have these small uh, bulbs sticking up from the surface, that's where we also get light reflected into the camera and they will be viewed as uh, brighter small objects sticking up from uh, from an otherwise darker background. Let's assume that we are planning to inspect with machine vision a spark plug. We want to inspect the threads of the spark plug and also this small small opening for the spark itself. So should we have the illumination on the same side of the camera, a front uh, side illumination or Maybe it could be a good idea to move the illumination on the other side, behind the object itself, to get kind of a silhouette image of the thread and silhouette image of this small opening of the, where you have the spark. If you look at this uh, picture here and this sketch, this is where you have the camera uh, and the lens and we have the object here and we have a diffused illumination uh, Diffuse bright field backlight. Bright field because most of this light is actually directed into the camera lens. But it's uh, backlight because it's on the opposite side behind the object itself. And you could see what kind of image could be generated if this object here would be a spark plug. You, then you see a silhouette image of these threads here. And you see a silhouette image of this opening for the spark but on the other hand you you do get a, a certain variance of the grayscale here close to the to the silhouette close to the edges that arises from that you have light coming from different directions also on the side of these threads so in further thinking what about if one could create illumination source here that is actually radiating uh, the illumination just in one direction, then maybe we could get rid of this uh, variation in the grayscale here uh, and get a sharper silhouette image of the thread. We should now try to instead use a telecentric lens that is generating parallel light rays. What we see here is a simple principal sketch of a camera and its lens. We have here the object. We have the illumination source that is now equipped with a telecentric lens having this small aperture. And on the output of the lens, 
uh, almost parallel light rates are, are emitted. Um, this is the same uh, picture as on previous slide using uh, diffused bright field backlight uh, and you see this little bit also diffused uh, silhouette image of the spark plug. Uh, this is on the right side here a corresponding silhouette image generated when using this tel telecentric illumination. And you can see that this silhouette image is much sharper. The edges are, are much sharper compared to the corresponding edges when using uh, diffused bright field backlight. Um, this is like a light emitting uh, diode back screen that is used as an illumination source for this diffused bright field backlight. And here is a special uh, light emitting diode uh, high power illumination source equipped with a telecentric lens that has been used. And we have a comparable look at the threads on the spark plug. plug. And we can see that we get a much sharper uh, silhouette image using this uh, telecentric illumination. Let's say that you have a machine vision for inspection uh, in indoor environment and you want to create this kind of controlled environment where you can control the illumination, then of course you can get into problem with the impact of, of the background, like ambient light, could be sunlight or light from the, the illumination that you have in the ceiling. Um, how to reduce the impact of this ambient light? And I now would like to show you a way of using synchronization between uh, flashlight and the camera exposure in order to reduce the impact of ambient light. We see here on the picture a principal sketch of a camera with a lens uh, for inspection of a surface. And this is a illuminating source, a telecentric light that gives parallel light rays down to this surface. But it generates short flashes and this these flashes and the generation of these flashes is synchronized with exposure in the camera. So the camera has an electrical signal output that is generating an electrical pulse whenever you have an exposure taking place or happening in the camera and where we have need for uh, instantaneous illumination. And uh, on the other hand, we have some disturbing ambient light here in the background. And we see here a uh, a time di diagram showing the exposure when it's taking place in the camera at these uh, predefined repeatable periods in time. And during the same time, we have a synchronization signal that activates the flashlight, the light that has a reasonably short duration and time and high intensity. Um, illuminating uh, this surface. On this uh, picture, next slide, we show how we have stressed this phenomenon. So we have decreased to a maximum the duration, the time duration of these light flashes at, at the same time increase the intensity of the light, the instantaneous intensity of the light such that the light dose meaning the intensity multiply the duration time is maintained. And at the same time, we can also decrease the exposure time in the camera to a minimum. And that way we can decrease also the impact of the ambient light that is recorded during this uh, short exposure time. And the shorter this exposure time in the camera takes place, we'd maintain a dose of the illuminating light, then the impact of the ambient light can be reduced. So the increased light intensity and light duration such that the light dose of the illuminating flashes are maintained. And the duration of the camera exposure can now be equi equally be reduced. And the impact of the lower intensity ambient light is thus reduced. So this is the con conclusion from using the property of synchronization of the light source. So, I have now given you a brief introduction to using light 
and exploiting the different properties of light when designing your machine vision system. I hope you will be as successful as I am. Mm. See you guys.